Real quick, I just wanted to say one more little area you can shade with the milk chocolate on your snowman is um, down on the hill. And it's supposed to be a wash, so really light, but I don't really do anything. Is here. You have to go on top of the hill. And I'm just going to go like that. Kind of fade it out. Stick it in the corner and pull it out. I might go all the way across. Why not? Hopefully I'm in the shot. Okay. That I wanted to do. Alright, and now we'll stipple. Now my battery's not blinking, so I don't know. I didn't change it. it says record. Um I also put a second coat on my carrot and my star and we need a little bit of the blue on the hat so the same color that you base the scarf with there's like a, a band on the hat a hat band so I'm just gonna do that right now why I'm thinking of it because you we're just this is just a little um, detail so he matches Okay, and I think that's all the base coating. We're going to add his arms, but I figured we'd do that when we do all the browns. So we're going to put um, pine branches and needles around the outside edge. We're going to do his arms, going to do a little, oh, the fence. So, I mean, we can kind of, no, we want to pounce in our, no, we'll put the fence before we pounce. That's a great idea. So I'm going to get out, <clears throat> I think it's burnt umber. Let me make sure. And you guys, if you have the pattern, don't listen to me if I'm saying the wrong thing. <laughs> you can read it. Let's see. Fence, fence, fence. Paint the fence rails and post with burnt umber. Paint a thin line of snow along both with, excuse me, titanium white. Excuse me. So I'm putting out some burnt umber. I'm going to grab my little detail brush. Um, and again, I don't want this too wet, so I, my, I'm going to go water, blot, and make a slicker wetter puddle, but you want this, I would rather not have to do two coats on this, just pull a line and be done, but we'll see. So I'm loading my brush pretty good, and for the, let's see, vertical parts of the fence, the up and down ones, I'm going to make them a little wider, I think, and that's just what I did. Plus, we're going to put white on them to make them look like they're snowy. So you can kind of get shape that way, too. And I'm just going to wing this. I mean, I'm not being particular. I just want them to look like they're, um, oh, that now my battery's blinking. So I put it down. And just let the brush do the work. Um, I have a hair there. But don't, um, it might shut off, so. Don't paint it in, just stroke it in almost, is what I'm trying to say. I think they should be kind of straight, not slanted. So that, I only, I have five. Maybe I'll stick one more on the end. No, you know what, you're not even going to be able to see it because we're going to put branches all around. And then, I'm going to kind of make it a little thinner and make I'm going to go off the edge if you want to trace these on, trace them I don't because it's just as easy for me to do this. See, I have a little fence. Super cute. All right, I gotta change my battery. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I had to get some tea. It got cold. Um, it's been snowing here in New Jersey this morning and I wasn't supposed to. Anyhow, we're gonna get out the white 
and we're going to do some snow highlights and put our moon in and it's it calls for I don't know some type of titanium white I think it is but I just have white this is white blanco whatever <laughs> so I'm gonna um base in this moon which I could have done when you know you weren't looking but um I'm gonna probably just give it hopefully two coats I did trace this on this time because I somehow my moon got so big look it's growing already it grows if you keep going it will grow okay stop growing all right so that's good just leave it um so I'm gonna use I have this brush too I want to show you it's a deer foot it's called a deer foot <clears throat> I might try it with this one actually uh, this is a quarter inch low Cornell and it's called a deer foot and you can kind of see the shape it's like a hoof I guess um, here we go I'll show you how to load this I'm gonna pounce it um, on my palette you know what I'll move just move this over you're gonna um, do I want it wet no I'm not even gonna put it in water I want to load the front the toes of the brush so I'm dipping that what's under there q-tip yep I'm gonna dip the toes in some of the white and then I'm gonna go over to my palette and just pounce it like bounce up and down it's okay to do that on a brush like this and then when you go to your piece I'm gonna just put this along his belly um, you just do the same thing you push toward the edge and just pounce it see I probably should have done this before I put the star on so I'm just going right over it's kind of dark I don't know that she intended it to be that dark and now I'm just kind of going into the middle a little bit look I went completely over my star um, you can take q-tip the magic of the q-tip and just take it off the star area because um hmm. I, de I definitely messed up there guys we should not have put that on until we were done pouncing because that's on top of him it wouldn't be we're gonna have to like definitely sharpen that up again because you wouldn't the star would be crisp it would be on top of his belly not behind this pouncing that doesn't make sense so and just a little on the edge over here and you know what there was supposed to be some on his face you know what maybe I'll just um, because I think we were supposed to um, get his cheeks rosy too before this before we put the um, carrot on for his nose we were supposed to give him some rosy cheeks so I think I should have followed the directions instead of but you know what it'll be fine um, definitely put it along this little bounce here about this hill this is cool hopefully I'm in the shot you know that's another thing oh, I am. just kind of bring it down I didn't use this brush the first time so it's definitely uh, showing a difference in color and you're gonna do it a little bit on this hill on the edge and this hill I have a lot of color in my brush so I'm just kind of that looks pretty it looks good so the only thing is we're just gonna have to touch up the um, star and that's basically it I'm not really worried about it honestly I think it looks good <laughs> Um, I'm going to brighten it up one more little tiny bit right on the front of his belly. 
I like it because once we add the details, it'll be okay. I mean, right here looks a little weird, but you know what? I should have. We should have done this first. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I messed up. Because now we're just gonna have to touch everything up. Like it's just a step backwards to have to go back into a place that we were done. Because we were gonna add this. We were on the finishing touches now. We were gonna add the stripes and the line work. Um, so where am I? Five minutes. I think the scarf will be okay. I can add my details there. The snow looks pretty on the bottom. I think, I mean, I think I'll add, because we still have to shade the carrot too. We'll have to touch the star, the carrot, and I think that's it. Just touch those, those up before we put our details on, so I'm sorry about that. Um, hopefully, maybe you'll watch this through before you paint, <laughs> start to paint. And you'll see that I should have, we should have pounced in the color, um, the white, before putting on the star and the um, nose. So, sorry about that. But the other thing you're going to do with the white is on the um, fence. We're going to put some, we're going to put it on his arms and we're going to put it on the, um, the pine, uh, branches that go around but you're just going to take a little on your brush you're going to kind of get it inky get it a little wetter so it like flows off your brush mix it up a little bit with some water and make a new puddle that's wetter and then when you go to your piece just kind of put it down and wiggle it along like it's snow falling you know, unevenly on both of the, um, and then a little bit on this section too. I mostly went to the top and just maybe here and there. Just whatever your eye thinks it should be. But right away that already like gives it so much more, um, you know, adding these details, that's when it starts to come together. That's the fun part for me. Prepping it, not so much. But I love the details. That's my fave. It always has been. Always has been. Um, I did woodworking, and uh, I remember Mr. Hankus was my shop teacher. And man, that guy would make us sand for hours. We would just sand that piece of wood. That wood would be so smooth. It would really be smooth. But I guess if you're you're not painting it, you're just woodworking. You want the, if it was just, I think, what did I make? I don't even remember what what the finished product was. But, um, yeah, it's not my my best friend sanding. Had a brush in my mouth, sorry. I'm just getting a little more orange. I went and uploaded the videos, but some the first three didn't come up. And I don't know why. My husband's going to have to, um, have a look. Oh. But the rest of them look pretty good. I think I'm actually teaching you something. Um, it's it's time consuming. You know, there's a, a lot of work to do. So you have to, you know, I mean, I guess if I wasn't talking so much, I could just paint. And you know, that's the thing about some people just speed the videos up and put the music in the background and stuff. And then you can just um, watch the process that way. But I don't know how to do that, first of all. <laughs> the other thing is, I think I need to tell you what I'm doing and why. Um, that's just how I learn. So I'm trying to uh, do that for you guys. You know, I mean, and you know what's funny is some of, some of the people who create these patterns aren't necessarily great teachers. They're great designers. They know how to do the process, but they don't know how to tell you how to do it necessarily. You know, I've had some that do a great job and, and others 
really aren't giving you much direction at all. They're just, you know, telling you what paint to put down or whatever. It's it's interesting. Um, I still loved every class I took, but you definitely learn more from other people than others. Some just don't know how to tell you. Um, sorry guys, I'm just really cold. I, I was sitting in the back and I, I don't think the heat goes back there as much or something. Oh. Nice cup of tea. Okay, so um, I guess we could give them some arms. Oh, no, no, no. The details on the um, the scarf is the gold. Since I have the gold out, I'm going to get my little, this is the script liner I want to use now because I really want thin lines. This is the one that I call my detail brush, but this is a script liner, and that's like just hairs. It's like it's like thinner than an ink pen, thinner, thinner than a pen nib would be. Um, but I'm going to get some gold on here. I'm going to get it wet. When you do line work, you want the, the paint to be wet and ink to an ink-like consistency. So really get it wet so that when, it, when you go to write with it, it f well, it's supposed to anyway, I'm on paper. Um, it flows off the brush like ink. So we're going to give these, this little snowman's um, scarf some stripes. So I'm going to go, I'm just going to put my brush down. I'm kind of pulling them at an arch, like not completely straight. I don't know why. Don't know why. There's a little fly. That rhymes. And then again, I'm going to do it this way, and I'm just pulling them with a bend to it. Maybe it's because I think it's going to make it look like it's got a bend to it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Don't know why I do what I do sometimes. And that's that. It also has fringe. When I get the blue, because we're going to do a blue stripe next to that stripe, but the other one would be the black plum which I still have, oh, I have plenty on my palette here, I think, but sometimes you gotta dig it out of the, um, excuse me, it gets this like film on top of it. So this is the black plum and I just have to pop that film and there's wet paint under there so I can get it and use it. Just mix it with a little water and get it to inky. And then I'm gonna put a couple stripes on his vest and they just go down straight straight stripes I mean you can make plaid maybe we should make it plaid because he's already got a striped vest um, you know that's this is the stuff that you can play and do whatever you want he's your snowman you dressed him up and there is a stripe here and here should we make them plaid? I'm leaving it. I'm getting carried away. Uh, I think the other, the, what are they called? The um, fringe is done in, not Williamsburg. Why did I grab that? French gray blue. That's the color I use to um, base the scarf. So I'm just getting a little bit more of that and some of the Deep Midnight, because I think that's what the other stripe is. The shading color we used for the um, scarf is Deep Midnight, So, and I couldn't get that out, remember? Come on, you stinker, just a little bit. Oh, you bugger. There we go. Um, and again, I want to get my script liner and get that really wet and inky. And then I'm just going to go um, on top, I think, of this line. And next to, I'll go to the right on this side of them. And I guess the right on this side too. And then on these, the top again. Top, 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 and I kind of went to the 
I went out into the snow there. All right, so that's good. So while I have this on my brush, I'm gonna pull some fringe on the bottom of the scarf, the ends of the scarf. And you just wanna go, keep it light and kind of flick them in there, you know? Boy, that's a long one. Just a few because we're going to go back in with the other color, the color the scarf started out with. So these are just kind of to add a little dimension dark. All right, so they're looking very fringy. I guess I can go down a little bit, but I like to be able to show you the um, what I'm doing on the palette too. So uh, I'm going into the color we based the scarf, which I used... Uh, French gray blue. I love that color. And I'm getting it inky. Turn the piece so that you're comfortable. You don't, even if it's a big piece, I would go around like, you know, I've, I've painted little tables and all types of stuff. You have to move it till it feels good. So you get a good result. And that was much thicker, wasn't as fine lines, but it still looks pretty. Alrighty. So that, I think, is the detail on the scarf. Now, he needs eyes and buttons, and I don't have any black out. I don't have it out. Where the heck? I have, like, by the time you're done painting, like you have all the paints all over the place, your brushes, everything's just strewn about and it's a little bit messy. But nevertheless, I have my black, get a little bit of black. And let's see, I think I'll just use my detailer. So not the tiny, tiny, not the script liner, but the, I think it's a number one. And get some paint on that brush and we're gonna make him some little buttons just going down his belly and I just kind of because they're supposed to be coal you know if you built the snowman where do we don't get coal anymore but you know back in the day they must have used coal <laughs> you can put as many buttons as you want but she has three so I am doing three as well and little tiny eyes and the way her pattern has it they're kind of sitting like this and it's kind of cute it looks like he's confused so I just put and again reference the picture you know or put them however you want but I'm gonna put them kind of like this and they're little they're not big they're just kind of like that and that they are actually a little bigger than I hope I would like but once you put the highlight it's gonna look fantastic so you know what we need to do too we need to shade and high or not highlight, just shade our star and shade our carrot. And the carrot is getting shaded with um I think it was that burnt orange. Yes. I don't know, I had uh Georgia Clay. Oh the mail the mail is coming. Georgia Clay out for some reason, but I'm going to use this. And all you do is put a dark line under his nose for a shading. That's all she did. She just took the darker color and kind of made a line down here to kind of give it, just pull it down. Because there, I put white on my nose. Like when I started putting snow on everything, I put a little on his nose. She doesn't have it on hers. Um, but I thought it looked cute. Um, to shade the star, I think it's going to be burn umber. I'm not looking at my directions. So let's see, star. Shade with light cinnamon. Aha, it would have been dark. So light cinnamon is... It's like hard to find it. I'm sorry. Kirby, it's okay. Oh, I got it. It's okay, Curve. It's just the mail. Are you okay? So, I know that pesky mail lady. Stop, Curb. Kirby. She's been sleeping all day. So, what am I doing? Light cinnamon. I'm going to do a side load. So, I'm doing a float. 
and I'm going to do all the left sides of the star here. So I'm sticking my brush in the corner and pulling down. And then I'm doing <coughs> Kirby! Oh gosh, she may have to go out anyway. So I'll go let her out in a minute. And like that. Oops, see I picked up I picked up a little bit of what I did. It's, it's closed quarters, guys. Close quarters, I should say. But that's just a little something there, right? Hey, Curb, what you doing? All right. What color is are the arms and the... Okay, because now I want to show you what we're going to do for the arms and these... Um, what are they called? Like uh, pine boughs, whatever. The pine branches. I think they're burnt arm, but you know what it was? I'm going to put this, get another pad out because I think she brush mixes um, a light brown and a dark brown, so I'm going to look for that branches. Uh, oh, it says paint them with burnt umber. Paint the pine needles in two layers. Okay. <gasps> oh, excuse me, guys. I'm so sorry. Oh, sip of tea. Mm. I'm going to use my, my script liner because this is like, so fun. Now, see... I didn't put any lines on here and I'm basically just winging it. I'm not going to get crazy over it. I'm going to use, what did she say, burnt umber? Yes. Shake it up. Okay. And I'm just going to make a continuous um, line. I'm not going to, like on this one I had two, like they kind of connect right here. One starts here and one starts here and they kind of come up and only go to the ends of the heart. But for this one, we're just going to do a continuous. Um, I'm going to get this real nice and inky. I got, I put a drop of water in there. And I'm just, because I'm going to use probably all this puddle. Because I'm going to make quite a few. And this is how I do it. If you want, you can trace yours um, on. Because she did put it on the line drawing. And I guess I'm just going to start anywhere really. I think I'm going to start here, but if I'm going to try to go down and let you really see what I'm doing. Okay. And I'm going to put it down and just let it squiggle around and let the brush do the work. Don't really try too hard. Just push, kind of barely hold it really and push down and pick up. And then what you end up with is fat and thin and dark and light. A lot of variation in color and in size of branches. So I'm kind of, um, I'm pivoting the brush like this. Oh wait, I'm going like this, turning, turning both ways. Um, and just letting the brush, uh, do the work. So I'm putting it down and then I'm going to turn back this way and then, you know, some, some, because I'm going to do it again and then I'm going to add, uh, little, little, like, I guess they'd be called um, twigs that come out. Like, see that twig? All right, so now we're going to go around again. Kind of make a one long twig here that, like, kind of ends. And then a lot of kind of here, huh? Another one. This one might just go there, but then I'm going to start another one that's going to wrap around because we're going to put um, pine needles on here. So don't, this isn't the end, this is just the beginning of what we're going to create. And you can always put another little one coming out. Uh, it, if it starts to look like it needs something somewhere, you can add it, you know, you go back around and
decide if you feel like you need more or less. If it's too bendy, you can stop doing that and straighten it out a little. And don't forget, you can always add another one. Make sure your paint is wet because it will start to stick if, you, if it dries up a little bit. And your brush just won't move as, as well. And your lines won't look as cool. So, that's kind of what I'm going to go with, I think. I think on this one, I really try, because I'm like, as with <laughs> embellishing in any way, you can get carried away, so you don't want too much. It's just a branch with a few tendrils, and it's just for, see this, I really liked how I did that. I kept it simple. I didn't get carried away. So I'm looking. There's still a little bit of detail. You know what we forgot to do? While that's drying, I'm just letting that dry. I'm going to grab that brush and the stripes on his hat. I didn't put any stripes on his hat, so that's gold and blue. So I'm just going to make tiny little, try not to stick my finger in a wet spot, um, stripes of gold and blue. So that's, if I forgot about that. Um, there's a tiny little dot of, stop it fly, there's like a little fruit fly in here, he's alive. Oh, while, let me see what the um, what it says for br branches, pine, and berries. Where's his arms? Because, I mean, I thought that was the same color as the um, what we just did, which I'm not finding. What am I, missing a paper here? Jeez. You know what, we're just going to, um, snowbox, prep, snowman. So, like on a belly. So it should be right after this, but I, I think I am missing a paper. I had just organized all my papers because I base coated the um this um this blue. Look at this color. My battery's blinking again. And it'll be so much bigger. Look how much bigger that is, guys, to paint. I can't wait. I'm gonna prep that and I might do that today too. Cause it's a yucky day out. Um anywho, um my battery's blinking, so I am going to be right back.